Quantum physics has always been a realm of wonder and mystery. In this field, we are constantly confronted with bizarre phenomena that defy our everyday intuition. One such strange phenomenon is known as super radiance, a synchronized, collective flash of light emitted from atoms, both fascinating and mysterious. While this effect has been observed for a long time in specially designed research systems used by experts, super radiance in free space has remained elusive, almost like an invisible phantom. It is one of the most surprising and remarkable phenomena in quantum optics. But what does this term actually mean? Understanding super radiance. To grasp this concept, imagine an atom as a microscopic antenna capable of emitting light, or more precisely, an electromagnetic radiation field. Under normal conditions when dealing with a collection of atoms that are far apart and thermally excited, they radiate independently of each other. As a result, the intensity of the emitted light is proportional to the number of atoms. However, when these tiny atomic building blocks are positioned very close together, something extraordinary occurs. The atomic antennas begin to communicate and synchronize, causing them to emit light with an intensity that increases with the square of the number of atoms. In essence, this phenomenon makes the atoms function as a single giant antenna, emitting light far more efficiently than individual independent atomic antennas. This collective effect is what we call super radiance, the role of optical resonators. This atomic spectacle comes with a significant limitation. So far, super radiance has only been observed in optical resonators or optical cavities. Special arrangements of mirrors designed to reflect light as often as possible, thereby increasing the electromagnetic field strength. In principle, other components such as lenses, waveguides or micro rings can also generate this reflective effect. The main function of an optical resonator is to trap and amplify light of specific wavelengths, a process that occurs due to resonance, where only particular wavelengths constructively interfere after multiple reflections. These overlapping waves amplify each other and remain within the cavity, giving the light unique properties that influence its behavior. Super radiance in free space. The challenge. If we move beyond these controlled scientific systems, we find that super radiance has not yet been successfully demonstrated in free space due to synchronization challenges, at least not until recently. Researchers have now explored this effect under various conditions using theoretical simulations, revealing surprising differences between optical cavity systems and free space. In optical resonators, atoms exhibit collective radiation behavior because of their interaction with photons, light particles that bounce between the mirrors. This continuous photon exchange allows the atoms to synchronize and emit photons in unison. Remarkably, when excited by an external laser, the absorption and collective emission of photons can balance each other, leading the system to settle into a stable state with a finite level of excitation. The synchronization problem in free space. However, in free space, as soon as the laser energy surpasses a certain threshold, the system's behavior changes dramatically. The atoms in the ensemble can no longer emit light quickly enough to match the incoming laser energy. As a result, they continuously absorb and emit photons without ever reaching a stable state, at least in theory. Although this shift in stable states was predicted decades ago, it has yet to be confirmed through experimental observation. Recently, researchers from Laboratoire Castler Brossel and the Institut d'Optique in Paris undertook an exciting study involving a pencil-shaped cloud of atoms in free space potentially undergoing the long-sought phase transition. Conflicting interpretations, however, their findings led to significant confusion among other experts. Synchronizing atoms in free space is notoriously difficult. This prompted Colombian theoretical physicist Ana Maria Ray, along with an international research team, to reassess the results. Further investigations uncovered an astonishing fact Atoms in free space can only partially synchronize their emissions. This suggests that the previous experiment did not fully observe the super-radiant phase transition. New simulations successfully reproduced the experimental data, explaining why complete synchronization 
was not possible under the given conditions. The quest for the super-radiant phase. Transition, however, the exciting possibility remains that the E phase transition could occur under different conditions, potentially at higher atomic densities. According to Ray, entering this regime would require a true quantum description beyond current theoretical methods. Solving complex problems in quantum physics requires collaboration between theoretical and experimental physicists. While theorists predict system behavior using mathematical models and simulations, experimentalists put these predictions to the test. This interplay between abstract ideas and real-world observations is crucial for advancing knowledge in this field. Entanglement and superradiance. One of the biggest questions in this research is whether it is possible to generate entangled states in different atomic systems. In an optical cavity, this is achievable due to one-to-one -one atomic interactions. However, how this process unfolds in free space remains uncertain. Unlike a finely tuned cavity system, which places atoms in precise quantum states, free space is far less controllable. Several challenges arise. Interaction-induced frequency shifts uncontrolled. Atomic emissions in all directions. Instead of a concentrated optical beam, the unexpected discoveries in free space. Given these difficulties, one might expect that the physics of free space superradiance would be significantly different from that observed in optical cavities. However, Ray's research team discovered surprising similarities. To understand the underlying physics, the team conducted a series of theoretical simulations where each atom was treated as a dipole, absorbing and emitting both laser photons and light emitted by other atoms. This task was especially challenging because the number of states in an optical cavity increases linearly, whereas in free space, it increases exponentially with system size. By using this model, the team analyzed the entire atomic cloud's properties under different conditions, such as varying laser intensities and atomic densities. The laser beam acted as a smooth wave, imposing a specific phase pattern on the atoms and controlling their interactions. Interestingly, the mean field approximation which simplifies the system by treating atoms as classical magnets, was sufficient to reproduce the observed physics. However, to ensure accuracy, the researchers validated their model using more complex approaches. Key findings ultimately, the study revealed that while the free space experiment aligned with the optical cavity model, the two systems behaved very differently under specific conditions. Notably, when laser power exceeded a certain threshold, the collective effect seen in the optical cavity disappeared in free space. The atoms transitioned from acting as a coordinated group to behaving as independent radiators. Despite these challenges, the researchers emphasized that their findings open new frontiers in quantum physics. This underscores the importance of collaboration between experimentalists and theorists, super radiance and future research, the ongoing research by Faro Merar from the University of Innsbruck, published in Physical Review Letters, highlights further complexities in superradiance. Mara explored two separate atomic ensembles within a cavity and discovered two possible outcomes. The atomic antennas could merge into a single powerful superantenna, emitting even stronger light. The atomic networks could compete destructively, suppressing superradiant emission especially when the two ensembles contained equal numbers of atoms. Interestingly, Merar also identified scenarios where the two antennas emitted oscillating superimposed light. These predictions are now set to be tested in modern cavity experiments. If successful, they could pave the way for a new generation of super-radiant lasers. That concludes this fascinating dive into super-radiance. If you found this insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an update. See you soon.